everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if this is the first of my videos that you're seeing. I'm Blue and I like to talk about figure skating. In today's video I'd like to do something a little bit different and I want to critically analyse um, how I think Eteri Tutvoritse and her team have become lazier in how they package their skaters. This video will not be an in-depth analysis on her coaching methods because that would probably be about a 10 hour video and um, I don't know if anyone would want to see that but if you do let me know in the comments and um, this video is just going to be sort of how I feel her and her team have put sort of less and less effort into uh, how they present each of their new skaters. I'm sure everyone knows, but just in case anyone doesn't, um, Eteri Tutberidze is a figure skating coach who mainly works with female single skaters um, at the Sambo 70 Skating Club in Moscow, and she's coached quite a few skaters to um, high success in international competition. And that's all I'm really going to give as a biography for her specifically now. As someone who doesn't particularly follow um, Russian domestic skating very much, particularly at the moment, um, and as someone who's not that invested in Eteri and her students, um, so this is sort of an outside perspective and an outside point of view, I feel like her team has become much less invested in trying to come up with an individual story for each of their skaters. And I'm going to explain this through a couple of keynote skaters. The first is, of course, Yulia Lipnitskaya. And Eteri was her coach um, when she became the European champion in 2014. And also when she won gold in the Olympic team event in 2014 and silver at Worlds that same season. For Yulia, she is very well remembered for her Schindler's List free program, um, particularly at the Olympics, because it was considered so moving. And that really helped to give Yulia um, a particular image. Yulia was known for her amazing flexibility, her beautiful spins. She was fantastic at conveying emotion. This was all what she was almost pushed to be seen or how she was pushed to be seen. And it really helped to like strengthen her image and make people think, oh yes, Yulia Lipnitskaya, amazing skater with incredible um, emotional maturity sort of beyond her years. And that really came because the team pushed and backed that image for her and supported it. And then I'm going to group the next two skaters together. So we have Evgenia Medvedeva and Alina Zagitova. So um, I'm grouping these two together because they almost came at the same time. Evgenia obviously had her senior debut a couple of years before Alina did, but the way they were presented is um, still like uh, the team still put like a lot of thought behind it, it seems. So Evgenia was known for her uh, interpretation, her storytelling. She was seen as the better component skater whereas Alina had um, fully backloaded programs, much harder technical content. She was seen as the technical skater. And uh, Team Tutberidze really laid into these images. They gave Evgenia the, for, particularly for the um, Olympic season, they gave Evgenia um, almost more like abstract and creative programs uh, in the short, for example, when she had to try and convey like dying <laughs> and then they gave her Anna Karenina where she had to portray the entire story in four minutes which is an incredible feat. Uh, in contrast Alina was given two very well-known pieces of music that she could almost use as a backdrop for her amazing technical content as Team Tutberudse was um, showing it was presenting it and they gave these two girls very different um, polarizing um, like they presented them as sort of two polar opposites but they still put energy and effort into presenting them that way if that makes sense and then the next group of three I feel like this is where Eteri's energy kind of starts to dwindle after them 
So we have 3A next, which is Elena Kostanaya, Alexandra Trasova, and Anna Shabakova. And so um, Elena Kostanaya, or Aliona Kostanaya, I'm not sure how to pronounce her name, I'm sorry. She was presented as the component skater again, very beautiful, really good skating skills, great components. And then Tristova was doing quads and was the technical little queen, little rocket, and was landing, you know, full five quads in a free skate and just going for them, because why not? And then Anna was somewhere in the middle. She did do quads, but she also um, had better components than Tristova. So there was still some form of packaging with the three A skaters that helped to make each of them distinctive. To me, the problem is with the generation that comes after the 3A. So um, that's Camilla Valieva, Maya Kromik and Daria Usacheva. Now, I understand that their packaging may have been um, interfered with due to the COVID pandemic, but it feels like um, a lot of the energy went into, I don't know, trying to make Camilla and Maya like almost both Anna Shabakovas, if that makes sense, um, but neither really wasn't Anna. And in my mind, Daria was probably like presented as almost the replacement for Aliona Kostanaya in that she didn't have necessarily the same technical content, but she had sort of um, better components, more like uh, artistry to use that word. I don't really like it, but you know what I'm trying to say? But there was no real equivalent for the for Alexandra Trasova. So trying to, when there's no almost polar opposite, you then can't have someone in the middle because they just become the new other end of the spectrum. And so trying to present um, Camilla or Maya as balanced doesn't really work when you don't have someone at the other end. And then after um, Camilla, Maya and Daria, she has, I believe, Sofia Adkieva and Adelina Petrosian. I'm sorry if I've mispronounced their names. Oh, and Daria Sadkova, I think. Um, I'm not too sure on how they are packaged. I've not seen a whole lot other than um, videos of them doing quads on TikTok. And it feels like the packaging has become so incredibly lazy now. They're all young girls doing quads there's no other sort of features that separate each one from the next and honestly it's really sad because before we could at least pretend as fans that they cared about the individuality of each skater they cared about their strengths oh Evgenia is very good at um, interpreting the music so we'll give her more theatrical like programs that she can um, express to more and Alina's better at like the technical elements so we'll go all in on that there's no pretense anymore it's very clear that team Toot Baritze is only really caring about land this jump land that jump do this leg kick like it's very it's all very cookie cutter and I, I really don't like it I am aware that she has some other junior skaters but um, honestly, I couldn't really tell you anything about them because I think, again, it's another case of this cookie cutter. Everyone goes in with different strengths and weaknesses, but they all leave basically the same. And it's sad. There's a loss of identity. And on the one hand, this could be because maybe Team Tud Baritze are becoming really lazy and they don't care to worry about the individuality anymore. Um, maybe they've got too many skaters and trying to come up with programs for all of them is too much for Daniel. But, you know, choreographers like David Wilson and, um, you know, Shailen Bourne, they choreograph for so many different skaters each season and they don't resort to the same program for every single one. So that's not really an excuse. The only other thing I can really think of is that Team Tudbaritze feel they have perfected the, I don't want to say factory process, but they have used that word. So Team Tudbaritze feel they've perfected the factory process 
and so each usually each girl comes in as a child and then she learns the quads and she wins something and then she retires young and through perfecting the factory process there is a loss of identity but that is I guess part of the processing that skaters go through at Team Tutbaritze. Of course there has also been the age rule change and we haven't seen what impact this will have on Team Tutbaritze internationally because um, she mostly coaches Russian skaters and they are not allowed in international competitions at the moment because of the war in the Ukraine so it will be interesting to see I guess what impact the 17 age limit now has on them and if they have to change their process. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate all of your support. Um, so thank you so much for staying. Thank you so much for supporting me and watching all my videos. I really appreciate it. Um, if there's a topic that you'd like me to cover, please let me know in the description or on my social media. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.